Shalom Chavrim, I'm Steve Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live and of course rocket sirens sounding once again in Israel from Gaza over to Ashkelon. What does that tell us? Well, it must be very close to election time. And of course, yes it is. Uh, the New York Times reporting Netanyahu facing tough Israel election pledges to annex much of the West Bank. Boy, he is really doing everything he can to make sure he holds on to power, but he does have some very serious competition with Aliad Sheikh, uh, the, uh, the young woman there that was with Naftali Bennett. They formed their own party, and she's pushing also for being the next woman prime minister in Israel. Either way, either candidate wins. It would be a win-win for the ultra-Orthodox uh, uh, right side there because they both support uh, the Talmudic ideology in Israel. Uh, that being said, we just uh, shared with you guys how that they are wanting to call for sacrifices there on the temple, excuse me, on the uh, uh, the Mount of Olives. This is the uh, quote-unquote Noahides. They talk about, well, there's not really any such thing as a Noahide laws. Well, they're going there to do the sacrifice Believe it or I mean, can you believe this? I mean, supposedly this is Christians as well. Let's just pull, let's pull this up. Okay, sacrifice, uh, Mount of Olives. You know, I mean, I really, I, I couldn't hardly believe my eyes and my ears when I heard about this uh, breaking Israel news. Uh, nations invited for animal sacrifice on the Mount of Olives, renewing Noah's covenant. And uh, they have on here on September 25th, 5,000, okay, I'm sorry, we're looking at uh, the Jewish calendar now, 5,780th anniversary of the day of which Jewish tradition holds the world was created. The Sanhedrin is holding the conference for the emerging uh, organization of 70 nations. You know, they're already talking about moving the, uh, moving the, uh, um, <clears throat> Sanhedrin, excuse me, yeah, the, the Sanhedrin wants to move the Hague, the International Criminal Court, to Jerusalem. Uh, you know, I just got in, as I was sharing with you guys the other day, uh, incredible, incredible book right here. Uh, I would love to have all the volumes. I only have two, thus, no, three of them. I have three. I have volume two, volume 8A, and I have another one still coming in on the Psalms. And uh, But there's one that I really would, or several that I'd like to actually get, but I can't find them. That's the problem. If you find any of these, uh, and of course you want it to be just like it's written there, the Dead Sea Scrolls, Charles Worth. Uh, I have the Damascus Document War Scroll. I have uh, the Genesis Apocryphon. Uh, it doesn't mean Genesis is Apocryphon, but it's Genesis and Apocryphon works from that time. And, uh, and I also have got the Psalms. Send me an email uh, on uh, stephenbenoon at gmail.com. Let me know where I can find it. I want to order more of these volumes, specifically this type here, because I get the Hebrew. Uh, they, they put that in there for me, as well as the English. You get to look at both sides. At any rate, this whole ideology of this is Noah's anniversary. They're going to kill some more animals there, and, you know, the people, representatives of several nations, quite a few nations, are actually coming. Uh, what, what a blasphemy. The very place where Christ prayed and everything, uh, there on the Temple Mount, and even the Ascension, uh, to be up there on the Mount, not Temple Mount, but the Mount of Olives. Uh, so, uh, it just really troubles me to see all these things going forth. But listen, we're getting very close time for the conference there, so I wanted to talk to you just a little bit uh, as we get near this time, because I do get the questions that are being brought up to me, and my wife shared with me uh, where someone had wrote to her about Daniel 8 uh, in regards to the <clears throat> the, uh, the uh, well, we should say Luke uh, chapter 21 verse 24 until the Gentiles be fulfilled, and also Romans 11.25, where Paul speaks about it, the fullness of the Gentiles be come in, and a lot of people are a little bit confused, and I can understand why, because people are saying, you know, you're talking about so many of these scriptures have been fulfilled, Zechariah, uh, you know, the fulfillment there, they're going to take a hold of the skirt of he, him that is a Jew, are a Jewish man, and will say that we hear that God is with you. Show us your ways. Steve, what about these prophecies that are laying here? How does this play out if so many of these other scriptures have been fulfilled? What about this here going on? 
Well, I have to share with you, and I want to thank whoever it was. Uh, I, my wife didn't tell me the name of the person that also sent Daniel 8, chapter 8, specifically verse, I think it's verse 24, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power, and he shall destroy wonderfully. Wait a minute, back up verse 23, I think it is. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors have completed their transgression, there shall stand up a king of fierce countenance and understanding uh, stratagem, stratagems. All right. Again, we're looking at an Antichrist coming right here, but he notice it's the way Daniel words it. When the transgressors have completed their transgression, are they related? Well, the only one that actually I think is more related to is Luke chapter 21. All right, and we have to understand when Jesus is speaking here in the book of Luke, the way Luke recorded this, Luke is really recording very similar to that of Matthew 24. He just gives us a little extra something here we didn't get in Matthew 24. So let's back up to verse 22. For these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Maybe I should back up a little bit more. Um, but there shall not inherit, wait, hang on. And you shall be betrayed both by parents and, and brethren and kinsfolks and friends. And some of you shall they cause to be put to death. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But there shall not a hair of your head perish. In your patience possesses ye your soul. Uh, and when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Now again... Many people think this is a compound fulfillment. Maybe, but we do know that this happened uh, 2,000 years ago, give or take a few years there. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart, uh, of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. You see, because... Jesus knew, Yeshua knew what was going to happen. He knew that there was going to be an incredible, it was a horrible time there in Jerusalem. Not only was the city encompassed about by Titus, uh, the Roman general, but also inside the, inside the walls of the city, they were, they were killing each other. They were eating each other's children, everything. I mean, some of the most horrible crimes, according to Josephus, it was committed inside uh, the city while, while the city was besieged was happening at that time. But it says here, for these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. Why does he talk about woe to them that give suck in those days and they have with child? It's because Josephus tells us they were eating the children. They didn't, you know, they were, they were so starved out from food. And you got to keep in mind, you know, Jerusalem is a desert. Basically, it's a desert, you know, other than the fact that we add some water there and we can grow some plants inside the city and things like that. It was a desert back then. And, you know, you take away, you cut off the food supply from the Jordan Valley and from the, the coastline there, back down and towards Tel Aviv and stuff. And uh, it becomes a very difficult situation. And Josephus tells us that they actually ate each other's children. It's horrible. But notice in verse 24, And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. All right? This is where it gets important. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. All right? Now, I had thought many times in the past myself, again, I apologize. I don't even know if I've ever actually said this before uh, on our, my channel here, but I know I've, I have believed it. I've taught it privately that when the times of the Gentiles is fulfilled, it's completely over for the Gentiles and that it, the gospel returns to the Jew and the Gentile days are done. I missed something on that, though. All right. When Jesus is talking about this, he's showing you that Jerusalem itself will be trodden down by the Gentiles after the destruction of the, of the second temple. And it has been. It was under Roman control, then Ottoman Empire control. 
different Arabic nations controlled this city and even till now it is controlled by the Jordanian government and Trump wants it put into the Saudis hands so the Saudis can destroy the Dome of the Rock so that they can put it back in the hands of the Jews. That's all that is. All right. But now, Paul, I know where you're going. You're going to say, but Steve, what about Paul in Romans 11? That's true. All right. Paul talks about the wild olive tree and the natural olive tree. Now, the natural olive tree is Israel. It is the Jewish nation. All right. And the wild olive tree represents the Gentiles that are grafted in. This is very important, and you've got to look at all three passages. I wish I could just simultaneously put them all up there at one time for you. You have to look at Luke, all right? After the destruction of the second temple, Gentiles are going to trod down that city until, and of course, Israel has part of the city back already, but they don't have it all back. It's going to be trodden down until the Gentiles' time be fulfilled. Once it's fulfilled, there will be a Jewish people that take over it, but will they be of God? No. Because, now, not to say there's not true Jews there. Yes, there is. And there's going to be Jews there that believe in Jesus Christ. All right? So just hold your thought there. Daniel 8 says that when the transgressors have completed their transgression, there shall stand up a king of fierce countenance and understanding stratagems, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. He shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and do, and he shall destroy them that are mighty and the people of the saints. You get it now? That's why the, the scripture, you know, and I know a lot of people have tried to tell me this before, and I even said, well, I used to always say, well, you know, I believe the Pope would be the Antichrist, all right? And now I've totally have got a different thought altogether, but that Antichrist will be Jewish descent, but only by one parent. The other side will be Nephilim descent, all right? While there is a true remnant of the Jewish people in Israel today, there is going to be a hybrid as we saw amongst the Pharisees. And again, not all just because a, a man is a Pharisee doesn't make him an evil guy. Nicodemus was a Pharisee and recognized that Jesus Christ was a, was, that, that no man could do the things he did except God be with him. Paul was a Pharisee, believed Jesus Christ to be the Son of God. Nehemi Gordon came from a Pharisee background, forsook his own teaching and training, and became a Karite Jew. And even, not, he's not a believer, all right, but he's very interested in the words of Yeshua because he considers Yeshua as a fellow Jewish brother, as a Karite, right? Many other Pharisees of their descent have come out and believe that Yeshua is the Messiah. So see, the Pharisees, not all the Pharisees, had intermingled their seed, as Ezra spoke about back in the times when they were in Babylon, not with Babylonian women, but with what? Hittite, Amorite, per, uh, Perizzite, Canaanite women there, because of what? They'd already made a covenant under Joshua and brought them into the land. So when they came back and the Maccabees overthrew through the priesthood, the Jewish uh, scholars today will tell you the Maccabees were actually Levites. Sure they were. But when those priests broke the covenant of Almighty God in Leviticus 21, when God said to them, they're only to have a wife that is a virgin and they're never to mix their seed, they broke the commandment of God and they have no right to a temple as a temple priest. No wonder why God had to set up a new priesthood. The order after Melchizedek, a new covenant. And if you've got a new covenant, why are you trying to take my brother, brothers that are messianic and my brothers that are evangelic, why are you trying to put Christians underneath Talmudic rabbis? Any kind of rabbi for that matter. You shouldn't do it. We have a Melchizedek priesthood now. And we already have one that stands in the place making intercession upon our confession and he is the sacrifice. Oh my gosh. Now, here's the danger, all right? So we see that the Antichrist, who will be of a Jewish descent, 
is going to come in. He will be that king that will stand up with a fierce countenance, right? And what happens? Paul, here's what's interesting because it's a simultaneous event. Watch what he says here. We'll back up a little bit. He's talking to the Gentiles. He said, you will say, I'm going to use the modern English for those who so understand better. You will say then the branches, speaking of the, the house of Judah, Benjamites, Judah, and Levites at that time were broken off that I might be grafted in. Grafted into what? The olive tree. By the way, the olive tree is Christ. He was that tree from the beginning. Okay? Well, because of unbelief they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. There's a warning to the Gentiles. Ministers, listen to me what I'm telling you. It's a warning to you. You're leading your flock underneath a priesthood in Israel that is not of God. That they forsook the commandment of Almighty God and you're taking your people back under that. Alright? Because of unbelief they were broken off and thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded. Right now, ministers, not just ministers, but also the, their, their churches, their people, their flocks. Because the ministers are leading them astray they are now leading them into unbelief. You say, oh no, Steve, we believe in Jesus Christ. We just we know we got to stand with Israel. You want to stand with Israel? Then stand with Jesus Christ. That's when you stand with Israel. You know how I know it's unbelief? You got to have a sacrifice. You got to set up a, a third temple and offer up lambs. And you got to condone that. And you got to you know, sell the coins so that they can finance this. That's the unbelief. That means you do not believe that the blood of Jesus Christ was what God needed to atone for the sins of the people. And that means you don't believe that the blood of Jesus Christ atones for the Jew as well. That's why you see these messianic people now. You got like Mark Vilch, you got... Uh, uh, Yitzhak Shapira, you know, you got other ones out there, Hagee even, talking about, he says, look, we don't take, you don't have to, we don't need to be witnessing to the Jews, they got their covenant. Then bless God, why did he say he'd have to give a new covenant? And if their covenant works so well, why did the, the temple get destroyed? And then why did they transgress the very commandment of Almighty God? For, verse 21, For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not you. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God of them which fell severity, but toward you, goodness, if you continue in goodness, otherwise you also shall be cut off. That doesn't mean all Gentiles will be cut off. Not all Gentile branches. You have to understand, friends, we are in the same situation as Israel was 2,000 years ago. God is now bringing Christ back up. And he brings Barabbas right back. You've got the son of the father Barabbas, which is of the devil. And you've got Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, the son of God. The true son of God. And what's happening? The preachers are saying, take Barabbas. Jonathan Kahn, another one. Oh, Barabbas meant they were crying out for the Son of the Father. They were crying out for the Messiah. For the, for the Messiah, for an anti-Messiah, maybe. Oh my gosh. Behold their... <laughs> and they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. Now that doesn't mean every person that claims to be Jew is going to get draft, grafted in again. For if... You were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, were grafted in contrary to nature into a good olive tree. How much more shall these, which be of the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery. 
lest you should be wise in your own conceit that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. All right? And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. What's going to happen? Your two witnesses will come on the scene. Jesus prophesied that Elijah would come and restore all things, future tense. Check it out. It's in the Greek language. John was dead. All right? They're going to wake up. Now, Jews are already waking up to who Yeshua is. But when the Jewish people in Israel begin to see, maybe secular Jews for all I know, they begin to see that Christians are forsaking Jesus Christ and all this evil is going on in their country. You're already, Christians are already glorifying, murdering all the neighbors of Israel for the, for the name of what? For the name of making sure we create the Jewish homeland. Do you not realize that everything, Barabbas was the murderer, right? There was two sons of the fathers there that day. Yeshua, who believed in peace. Who actually went to the Syrians and healed their sick and, 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 and took care of them. I guess Israel couldn't take that too much, so they had to make sure they, you know, I was banging so hard on this issue when I spoke against what they were doing in Syria that they had to start bringing in the wounded from Syria to, to, to doctor them up so they make it look like they're fulfilling scripture. We're healing the sick like Jesus did. No, you only healed the ones that were doing the killing of the Christians in Syria. That's what you were doing. But you see, when that fullness of the Gentiles become in, see, this is when there's going to be a move. It's a, it, the, the, see, that doesn't mean that the Gentiles are done completely. See, God's got to have a witness. He can't burn off this whole world without two witnesses. And he's got to witness and testify that there was whoredom. And the whoredom that was committed was committed in Babylon by the Levitical priesthood. So that Levitical priesthood has got to regain power in Israel. See, first, everything was burnt down 2,000 years ago because of the sins of the Levites. And Christ brought in the Melchizedek priesthood. You can't go in reverse. You can't go back. You can't, as the dog returns to its vomit. All right? You can't go back to that. There is a new priesthood. Paul laid it out beautifully. How do we miss it? I mean, for heaven's sake, how did I miss it? You know, and the commandments should be written on the table of your heart. I won't kill. I'm not going to kill. I'm not going to commit adultery. I'm not going to, I'm not going to take and, and I'm going to love my neighbor as myself. You know, you're going to keep the commandments from your heart. These are the things I want you to think about. At any rate, blessings to you. We love you. Thank you. For your, for your kindness that you show to this ministry. We can't do this without you. I know it's not easy. I've got friends that are ministers that I know that when I'm speaking these things, and they know it as well, I'm kind of scalding them, but you know I love them, and I'm trying to reach out to my brothers that are, that are going in this wayward way to get them to wake up and recognize, because if you go that way, you will reject Jesus Christ. That is when you will be guilty of crucifying the Son of God afresh and putting Him to an open shame. Okay? We love you. Thank you. It's not many that will stand with us, but we thank God for those that do. There is a remnant of Israel that their eyes will open. And that's when he says, when he says all Israel shall be saved, that was that remnant down through the ages. All right? Thank you. God bless you. Check out our website, israelinewslive.org. Uh, make sure we approved you on there uh, for this conference there. We love you. Hope to see you Saturday. If you're not able to make it, could you please drop us a note in the comments that you're not going to be able to make it? Because if you're not going to be able to make it and there's someone close by that wants to come, I'd like to let them know they can come. Good evening.